Gyrojab, the rocket and gun. In 1960, a nuclear weapons researcher called Robert Maynard decided to design a rocket gun that would shoot rocket bullets. If the first thing that pops into mind is the image of a bazooka, that's fair enough. But rocket launchers have been around for a while now. What Robert was trying to accomplish was a rocket shooting pistol. On a regular weapon, every bullet has a small amount of low explosive which is ignited and literally explodes the bullet out of the barrel. As soon as the bullet is out of the barrel, it will start losing speed because at this stage, nothing is accelerating the bullet. The idea behind the gyrojet handgun was to create a bullet that would use rocket fuel to accelerate itself even after it was out of the barrel. This means the max speed of the bullet wouldn't be the muzzle speed, but instead, somewhere closer to the target. Even though this concept seemed very interesting on paper, it did raise a lot of engineering problems. The funny thing is that the way they solved the problems only made the gyrojet more interesting. Do you ever notice how most rockets have fins on their body? Those are there to help them fly straight. On a gun with a cylindrical barrel, you can't really use fins, so instead the engineers at the MBA use tilted rocket nozzles to make the bullets spin at insane speeds and thus achieve gyroscopic stabilization. If you know anything about guns, you probably know that this type of stabilization has been used in guns for a long, long time with a much simpler solution. Spiral grooved barrels. The problem with the gyrojet is that the initial velocity of the bullet is not big enough for the grooves to work. So instead, they had to use tilted nozzles. When I found out this was an actual thing that existed in the real world, I wanted to get one for myself. But unfortunately, nowadays, this very interesting concept of a weapon is very rare and very expensive. But that's no problem for me, because who needs to buy a well-engineered rocket gun when you can make a much cheaper and crappier version yourself? If I'm actually gonna build a rocket bullet, I need to break it into its basic components, which are the casing, the propellant, the igniter and the nozzle. Let's start with the casing. In my case, the obvious choice for the casing was a CO2 cartridge. I have a ton of those from other projects and they fit the criteria. They are metal, they can handle a lot of pressure and the only thing that I really needed to do to adapt them was cutting one of the ends off and make some holes to secure the nozzle with a steel pen. Next, the propellant. The original gyrojet used this fancy composite propellant, but I don't know how to get that. So I decided to make my own. So right now I'm going to cook the propellant, which will be constituted by potassium nitrate, 65 grams, um, dextrose, which is a, a special kind of sugar, it works pretty well for, for propellants, uh, 37 grams, and iron oxide, 1 gram. Uh, the iron oxide is just a catalyzer. It will not be consumed and it's kind of nice because it gives a reddish color to the propellant. I said I'm going to cook the propellant because I'm going to use an electric stove to melt all of this together into a grain. Yep, the electric stove is right there. Using an electric stove, I melted all the ingredients at a temperature of 130 degrees Celsius. This is a good way of mixing everything thoroughly, but also raises a problem. The function of a propellant on a rocket is to generate gas, and in this case we want to generate as much gas as we can in the shortest amount of time possible. To achieve that we need a simple shape that will burn with a lot of surface area. And in my case, I chose a cylinder with a hole in the middle. With a simple shape, the grain will burn from the outside in and the inside out, which not only guarantees a lot of gas being generated, but also an almost constant level of thrust. With a lot of melted propellant in my hands, the obvious choice of a manufacturing process to make the shape that I wanted was to pour it into a mold. So I 3D printed one. My first design was a three-part mold that kind of worked, but was really hard to pour in. On the next iteration, I created a two-part mold with an aluminium shaft that would make the central hole. This one was easier to pour in, but almost impossible to demold without breaking everything. My final solution was actually a mix of the other two designs, with the addition of a plunger to compress the liquid propellant. This method is far from perfect, but got the job done, and before ruining the molds, I was able to get six propellant grains. After solidifying, this propellant gets really hard, like candy. And to make sure I would ignite it properly, I decided to use a very well-known explosive, gunpowder. So to make about 100 grams of gunpowder, you're gonna need 75 grams of saltpeter or potassium nitrate, um, 15 grams of charcoal and 10 grams of sulfur. I'm not gonna do 100 grams, I'm gonna do like 50 because it's just for ignition, so yeah. And first I need to grind all of this, especially the charcoal. I can't really mix anything in this state. Time to grind! Ok, 
Okay, I think it's done. It seems pretty fine to me. Okay, I'm gonna add 7.5 grams of charcoal. And the sulfur until 51 and a half. I would say that's good enough. And now we need to mix all of this. Oh, my hat. So to better mix this, I'm gonna pour it into this plastic container and then use uh, a couple of marbles to mix it in pretty well. No sparks involved. Okay, so I'm done mixing. Uh, we have our homemade gunpowder, I think. Uh, let's give it a test. But first, uh, I'm gonna label it just for safety. How do you spell powder? Pow W D E? Is that correct? I think so. Anyway, let's give it a test. Oh, nice. I know it seems it burns pretty slowly, but uh, that's because there's no pressure. This is burning at atmosphere atmospheric pressure. If it's under pressure, it burns much quicker. And as you can see, there's almost no remains. Everything was consumed and turned into gas, which is what you actually want with a propellant. And yes, gunpowder is also a rocket propeller. It's just a, ch a shitty one. So I bought this high resistance wire, which is made of nichrome. Uh, it's used in vapes. Because it's high resistance, if you pass a small current through it, it becomes incandescent, which is perfect for ignition. So I'm gonna give it a try. In three, two, one. Oh yeah! It worked perfectly! Nice! So I can use the Nikon wire to ignite the gunpowder, but I need to encase the gunpowder. And to do that, I'm gonna use these um, plastic straws. It's pretty hard to get these, because now they are banned from the EU. I had to go to the special store for birthday parties. I know it's not very appropriate since this is for children, but I need those rockets. Now I'm gonna mark a piece of straw with one and a half centimeters and cut it out. It's probably gonna jump. It didn't. Okay, so now I need to seal one of the ends of the, the straw. And to do that, I'm gonna use these pliers to hold it like this. And now I'm gonna use a flame and close it down very gently. And I think it's done. Yep, it's closed. You see? Okay, now to the vise. I need to fill this up with uh, gunpowder. Uh, this is not a very good method. It's a very wasteful one, actually, but it's the only one I I was able to, to conjure, so bear with me. I have a lot of gunpowder, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, let's try to do this. In you go. And hot glue. Not really handy with this kind of stuff, so not gonna look good. As long as it seals it completely, it's fine. Okay, I think I did it. Now I can remove this from here. I have an igniter. Now I just need to repeat this process uh, about 10 times. Yeah. But before I do that, three, two, one. It works. <laughs> nice. So far we had a casing, a propellant, and a way to ignite said propellant. This is a good setup to generate a lot of gas, but to make it into a rocket, we're gonna need a nozzle. Now, a regular nozzle is already pretty hard to manufacture, but this one is especially hard, because it has two holes and they are both tilted 8 degrees. To make sure I didn't mess this up, I asked for the help of my friend Carlo. Carlo has a YouTube channel called Backyard Ballistics. He's also a ballistics expert and someone that already tried to replicate the gyrojet. He was actually the one that brought my attention to this concept of a weapon. Carlo used an aluminium nozzle that he manufactured using an array of tools and a lot of templates. This seemed like a lot of work for me, especially because I think I can 3D print the nozzle. I got a 3D model from Carlo and I 3D printed the nozzle using two methods. The first one was using Bob to 3D print the nozzles in ceramic material. Yes! 
Now it's time to remove this base here. <sighs> Carefully, not to break the part. Just gonna remove the majority of it. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna sand sand it down a little bit. A little bit of strength. Yep. Yep. <sighs> here, here we go. Five hours later. So this is the final result for a ceramic nozzle. It's not bad. Um, it's a pretty loose fit, but uh, I need space for the glue anyway. Uh, and I'll have the, the steel shaft to secure this using this hole. So I, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. This is already dipped in uh, water glass just to make it non-porous. I think this is gonna work pretty well. Yep. I was hoping the ceramic nozzle would perform well. But just as a backup plan, I used the Virtual Foundry's filaments to 3D print some nozzles in bronze. I had everything that I needed to make a gyrojet rocket bullet. So I assembled the bullets and gave them a test. As a barrel, I used a transparent acrylic tube with a 3D printed support. It works! What the hell? I have no idea what's going on. So, for some reason, the RC circuit missignaled and ignited the rocket before I had a chance to say Mississippi Trippy Skippy. Safety third, guys. <laughs> I'm going to get demonetized one of these days. The bronze nozzle didn't work out pretty well. It melted, it completely melted the bronze. Or maybe the, the nozzle wasn't really solid. I'm hoping that I'm gonna better get, get a better result with, uh, with the ceramic ones. Let's do another test. Three, two, one. So, nothing happened. Because the ignition worked too well on the first time, this time it decided to not work at all. Story of my life. Anyway, I got some sparklers and I ignited the rocket in the good old way. Let's hope this goes. And nothing. Wait! So the acrylic tube was too much of a tight fit. To solve that, I replaced it with a looser PVC tube and gave it another go. I wanna explode that pumpkin, please. Maybe I need some aimbot. Yes. Jesus! This one has more punch. <laughs> Wait, what is the mouth of the pumpkin? Let's see the slow motion footage. So, I wasn't able to explode the pumpkin, but at least I got that smirk out of his face. Yeah! Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <coughs> we missed it! This one didn't perform that badly, but I missed the target again. So to improve my chances, I got more pumpkins. Okay, we have two more rockets. Um, as you can see, I put three pumpkins there so I can uh, improve the chances of hitting one. Uh, let's try again. I've watched the slow motion footage and the rockets are tumbling out of the, the, the barrel. This barrel is a little bit larger, that's, that's one of the reasons. The other one is I don't think the nozzles are performing as well as I expected. But anyway, let's test it again. Three, two, one. Wow. Here you can see the nozzles are not exactly doing their job, since the rocket is not really spinning that much. Final test! 3, 2, 1... Oh my god! I can see the hit marks. There's a hit mark here, another one here, and another one here. And that is all! I have no more bullets! That's all for today, folks. My rocket bullets weren't performing as well as the original gyrojet bullets. But anyway, this was a good opportunity for me to test some 3D printed rocket nozzles. Which is a problem, because they are not really working. I think it's time for me to experiment with other materials, like concrete nozzles or maybe graphite nozzles. In the end, I didn't get the perfect gyrojet bullet, but that doesn't really bother me. I learned a lot and I tested a lot of stuff. 
What actually bothers me is that, up until the end, I wasn't able to explode that pumpkin. I was so annoyed that I poured all of my leftover propellant into one of the pumpkins, to try and blow it up, but that also backfired. Actually, it top-fired. I just made a rocket-powered pumpkin. 3D printing is not always the final answer, but it does answer a lot of questions. As always, all the 3D models that I used in this project are in the description down below. If for some reason you don't have a 3D printer to print said models, well, I'm giving you a chance to win one. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Richard Smith and he suggested that I could use my CO2 rockets to explode some tomatoes. That's actually a great idea. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. I would like to give a special thanks to Jeff from Tau Flatermouse for letting me use the footage he has of him shooting the original gyrojet. Thank you, Jeff. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Speak in English now, please. This is like a reputation. A little bit of sulfur. How do I open this? No. Oh. So yellow.